struggle, striving for competitive advantage over others. I found that idea and the promulgation of that idea profoundly disturbing and worrying, not least because if it, there are two aspects, two values that I sort of learned as a child. One was honesty and the other was compassion. And anyway, that's, that's as, as may be. And as a result of those motivations, a sort of fascination on the one hand, a fear or disturbance and anxiety on the other, it led me to ask myself some questions regarding what is our true nature that go beyond the usual province of biologists. So I'm asking the question now that theologists might ask, what th that physicists might ask, but biologists, in my experience, hardly ever ask, at least not in terms of their subject of biology. And, of course, it's quite difficult, because I can relate very well to what you say, actually, <laughs> is that most of science is unintelligible to me in terms of the language. Okay, so I can relate to the specialist language within my own field. I can use all these Latin names. I can talk about hyphae and mycelium and goodness knows what. Uh, and other people will look at me as if I'm strange. Uh, but when, when it comes to trying to understand the language of quantum mechanics or whatever, I, I get lost very quickly and it becomes huge effort to try to understand what's going on. So I can relate hugely back to that. So I sort of asking this and asking this question of myself and essentially through my personal contemplation and life experience, no more or less than that, trying to answer that. And over the years I've I felt that something profound was missing from the mechanistic and materialistic views of life, which prevented understanding of the <coughs> origin of its recurrent current patterns of expression. I can't I can't explain those patterns.